Bros, bros, bros. It's TVT time. Need I say more? It's Cosmonarchy. It's not just gonna be tank lines and, and mech drops and other such silly things. There's gonna be a lot more going on. EUD64 takes on Top Ramen on Impetus. A map by VX7. We've got Top Ramen in the bottom left. Of course, the top right spot eludes him once more. That's taken by EUD64. This is a two spawn map for Cosmonarchy. Perhaps the only RTS to succeed Brood War. Whoa! Yes, it's a, a game built within Brood War, something that surpasses it, goes beyond it, goes beyond really what any other RTS has uh, offered. I think many people will say that, but even if you're more skeptical, or maybe if you're just like a guy who enjoys many RTS games and Cosmonarchy happens to be one of them, I'm sure you can agree that it is one of a kind. So, what do we have here? TVT. Mirror matchups galore. This was played on the uh, current tournament patch. Not a lot of people enjoying the latest uh, pre-release with all of the fancy updates for visuals like Mavericks having a nice little read for when their stim pack kicks in. All sorts of crazy stuff that we've been adding throughout it. And this is kind of interesting. So both of our players getting a little bit of Vespian here, but it looks like to me that EUD with the stockade opener is gonna go bio into Quarry. Quarry being an add-on for the ministry that allows you to get a second worker production queue. So we can kind of figure out here that uh, EUD is thinking a bit more aggressively perhaps, about grabbing that macro advantage. However, uh, it does also seem to me that maybe he's going to, he's not really going to get the, the what would you call it, the uh, quarry that much faster than his opponent. I think maybe Top Ramen started harvesting Vespian a, a little bit faster than him or something, because even though the, the first 50 Vespian Ramen got went through the Fulcrum, uh, he's actually not going to get the quarry that much more delayed, right? It's going to be after this uh, Mason. So, you know, maybe like five second delay or something. It's not that significant. Vulture coming out here for Top Ramen. Uh, I did put EUD64 above him in this situation because he's been practicing so much, man. And and R Ramen has been practicing as well. Uh, but even though Ramen has the head-to-head -head where EUD went mass bio versus uh, Ramen's mech, that was on Germination. It was a very different circumstance where they hadn't really played too much TBT. And, you know, uh, the EUD was still very, very new to the project, I would say. Now he's, uh, by this point, he's practiced a lot, right? This match was played, I want to say the 28th. Yes, the 28th of April, uh, whereas I think that Germination match was like, you know, two weeks earlier than this. So uh, just to give you an idea that uh, one player is, uh, in this case, I think EUD is a, a lot more experienced. Now, the same goes for Robin, who joined a little bit earlier than EUD. Uh, something that I was very happy to hear from EUD is that he was basically saying like, yeah, dude, I'm going to uh, uh, win a bunch of tournaments before I go on break. So he's already uh, got competitive aspirations before his next big work gig for a couple of months. And we will miss him, of course. He's been featured on the channel multiple times, which you can be too, should you decide to uh, join us. Second Fulcrum coming on down here for Top Ramen. And I guess I'll use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about what's going on here. So the reason this Mason is hugging the uh, nine o'clock position is because it's gonna go ahead and build a watchdog at some point that will be lifted off and flown over because all Terran structures have lift off except for their add-ons, which have the self-destruct option that lets you clear the space if you wanted to take a new slot, for example, because every structure that builds an add-on with the exception of the nanite assembly will uh, offer you a different add-on as an alternative. And the Vulture here, uh, oh, the Vultures here, have uh, a different mind than before because there are no researches or upgrades in Cosmonarchy. Instead, you just have everything from the word go. So uh, we have these lobotomy mines here and they do a uh, explosive uh, attack or whatever that uh, has some splash damage. And that splash damage it doesn't actually deal any damage, but that area of effect applies a stun. So we'll see if that ends up kicking in here versus the bio that EUD has. I really like his positioning of the Mavericks. When you're on a high ground on Cosmonarchy, you get plus two weapon range targeting down a cliff. And that is very different than the RNG of StarCraft 1, right? So still no Watchdog over there. So uh, I promise you it is coming. That's the new name for the missile turret. We've renamed a bunch of names, right? Uh, so the, the main differences for things like the Maverick is that they have a stim pack, right? So uh, the stim pack from the word go, you don't need to upgrade their weapon range or whatever. And stim pack also works very differently. There's a delay on stim where it takes a, a second and a half to kick in. And at that point, we see the uh, effects kick in and the effects are significantly more pronounced. It also only deals five damage instead of 10, but it deals the damage as soon as you hit the button and the, the effect kicks in a little bit later. So you wanna kind of predict the flow of engagements and you can use that proactively to set the tone, force your opponent to respond to you. We'll see if that plays in as well. This Goliath here for anti-drop, not exactly sure what his opponent is doing, hasn't braved the ramp to find out. And look at this, we've got double Covenant here, so we're going to see some specialist infantry. I'm sure EUD will be planning a move out soon. 
However, he has no expansion behind this, right? He's been tunneling pretty heavy on the workers. He's got a little bit more of a worker advantage. His watchdog now making its self known over here. Don't worry, eventually we'll remodel it and have a landing gear on it and make it so that it looks proper when floated. But the Goliath here can clean that up at some point when Top Ramen notices it. And he will go for a ministry expand. So there's a second production structure you can make or expansion structure you can make called the treasury. It's a big white thing. It looks very different than uh, than the, what you're used to with the ministry. And the fact is that it doesn't train workers directly, but it can get all of the add-ons that the uh, uh, ministry can. So it, you've, usually what we'll see is players build a treasury, land it, build a quarry, and that quarry will provide you with the worker production queue that you would normally get from the ministry. So in this case, uh, once EUD does that, because he is making a treasury, He'll have access to three worker queues, and EUD, uh, his opponent, Raman, going for a quarry immediately as his uh, ministry finishes. He's transferring some workers down as well. The transfers happen uh, a little bit differently in Cosmonarchy. We'll talk about that in a moment because the mines are starting to pop off, and I wanted to show how they work. Uh, by the way, the mines uh, do not block building placement anymore either. So there you go. When it actually detonates, it will indeed hit a uh, uh, you know a unit and lock them down using the old lockdown spell. There is no lockdown anymore. It's been repurposed into the mine. Funnily enough, way back in like, I want to say like four years ago, the vultures still had spider mines like as recently as a year and a half ago, I think. And then the uh, Eidolon, the ghost replacement, has um, provides itself with the, uh, the lobotomy mine. And that uh, basically... Uh, was something you would fire at like a projectile and then it would arm itself. So you'd be able to land it, uh, like f shoot it off at a location and then it would deploy from there. I think that's actually kind of neat and it would be nice if maybe we had uh, more units that had lobotomy mines than just the uh, the vulture. So maybe that's something to think about for a future revision because we're making changes to Cosmonarchy all the time. We just want to make it so that those changes aren't too drastic. Now a single Haraka, I'm gonna charge forward here. It reveals that there's an anchor with two Goliaths in it. Yes, you can put mech units in anchors. Man, there's so many things to try to cover if I was really trying to explain all the changes from the word go. Uh, but I promise you, there's a, there's a lot to cover, right? You can harvest gas directly from the geyser, yada, yada, yada. Minerals, when they deplete, they give you three minerals instead of four per return. So they're still permanent, uh, but you just get less money from them. They used to give you two, which I personally liked better. Uh, but it looks like until we get bigger maps to have more bases, that depletion mechanic was maybe a little bit too significant. I thought I also theorycrafted like another thing that instead of depleting to two or instead of depleting the three, we could still deplete the two if like the it took longer to mine out a base. Like maybe mains and naturals would have like 2k minerals instead of 1500. And then the third bases could have something else, maybe more or maybe less, depending on what we wanted. But anyway, we went with three because three and because it seemed like it was the, uh, you know, uh, something worth taking a look at and exploring. But definitely something you've got to get used to, right? You keep thinking to yourself, my opponent's mined out, surely he's got to expand, but not exactly how it works. You still do get uh, rewarded for expanding to other bases though. That's definitely true. Now a watchdog scout gonna be assembled here as the Atlas comes on down. Top Ramen going to see what his opponent is up to. And the Anseal here to reveal the mines when they blow up, uh, but when they're destroyed, uh, they don't always stun stuff. They instead will slow. Now uh, that does actually stun the Anseal, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And the Anseal is indeed going to be moved backwards. This detector unit also shields units underneath it. So that was allowing the infantry to stand tall versus some of the mech units. Raman has to really consolidate his forces here, though. He has lost his anchor. And the bust doesn't look like it was too successful. EUD now falling behind in terms of worker count with his uh, unsuccessful push in the early stages of the game. We did see him go for two extra stockades for Harakan production and then go for the star pad. The Vestry gives you healers. The Covenant gives you specialists. The specialists of choice so far have been savants. But I actually think that uh, since his opponent doesn't have a star pad finished, Eidolons would have really uh, been a tough nut to crack. The way that cloaking works for Terran is that cloaked units have proximity cloak. So if you get close enough to them, they decloak and otherwise they remain permanently cloaked, even when they're doing nuking or whatever. And uh, that means that your Eidolons, your ghost replacement, right, could have been over here outranging massively in this situation. Uh, but, you know, most people are preferential to the savant. They think Eidolons are more niche. I'm one of those guys that likes to argue in favor of them uh, because I feel like it would be cool if more units were used. Obviously, we've got 50 units per race. Hello. Might as well uh, use a lot of them. Uh, but I do unironically think that they would have helped him out here, right? Because he's, he's trying to take advantage of uh, you know, a superior tech timing to siege, but his opponent has the counter to visible siege and not the counter to invisible siege, right? So there, the star pad is only now done. That's where you get the anseal from. And he's going to go ahead and deploy a star port and a couple of captaincies, as well as dropping some anti, uh, anti air and anti drop defenses, with the one Goliath on watch as well, zoning that watchdog away. 
Top Ramen's own scouting over here in the top right. Lots to talk about here in uh, TVT, as you can see. It's very different than what you would have expected. EOD considering his next course of action, it will be to drop an Atlas for Tier 2. That was not scouted by this Watchdog, so that's important to note. Top Ramen has no idea. Funnily enough, they both have Watchdogs in relatively similar positions in each other's bases. It's kind of cute. And here comes the treasury for the faster third base. Top Ramen doesn't have a... Oh, he has the Ministry, so it looks like he'll, he's going to go for that instead. Now, these two have played so many games against each other, I don't actually know how much of that has been, uh, like... I, I wonder how much of this is they've played uh, TBT because they've been playing a lot where Ramen is playing Protoss so that EUD can practice that matchup and then he can share his thoughts and then Ramen can uh, think about that himself. Now, deploying this Phalanx is a little bit of a mistake, I think, but EUD doesn't jump on him for it because he just wants to get out of there in time to live. He's got a lot of bio units scattered around, but he's finding it difficult to storm the gates. This is where I think if you were Neblim, you're already writing the comment that the star pad should train the worker, or sorry, the transport, and the transport, which is called the Trojan instead of the dropship, should load up all of these Harakans, which used to be fire bats and are now called Achmed, and the Harakans could be dropped on the enemy phalanxes, dealing massive splash damage and also rending armor, because that's what Achmed does now. That definitely does sound like a comment that Neblim would leave with all the twists and turns and uh, mistakes all the time. I'm sure he would work Purifier into it somehow, even though the Protoss aren't even in this game. But that's okay. The Atlas is done, and we can move on. I do, interestingly enough, see that a Salamander is being made. Uh, pretty good crowd control tool, in my opinion. I was thinking about revising it pretty recently. It has a very epic set of voice lines, and I think it's uh, something that should exist. I also think maybe it shouldn't be that hard of a model to try to do a remodel of at some point if we wanted to. So maybe I can do that as modeling practice later. Been trying to upgrade the game's visuals a lot lately. I already mentioned the Maverick Stimpak reads, which are not present in this game, but are present on pre-release if you're curious about them. You can uh, download Cosmonarchy pretty much with one click using the Fraud Launcher. Now, if you want to do multiplayer setup, it's like an extra few clicks because you got to install this network utility we use, uh, but it doesn't take that long. You don't even have to restart your computer or anything. You just straight up go into it, set it up, get it running. And of course, if you have any trouble, join our Discord server. Join it anyway, but join our Discord server and ask for help. But uh, most of the time you don't need help. So there is that. Looks like the Harakan will make its way to the bottom right. Confirm no fourth base for now, at least not in that location. I mean, obviously in this location, we know that there's no fourth base here because UD has that locked down. Uh, with tier two complete, we have the star ports coming for, uh, actually, yeah, okay. It looks like EUD gonna go for something similar. This time he's adding Tinkerer's Towers. Dude, my man, are we gonna see Sirens? Are we gonna see Strigas? This guy is building all of my favorite units. All we need are Cyclops. Can you build one Fulcrum for a Cyclops, please? And then just drop it in the mineral line and forget about it. The one Salamander. Uh, you do tend to need more than one to make things happen, but we'll see what ends up going down. The Lines of Scrimmage, founded by Ahmed. There's a lot of Ahmed, dude. Ahmed's the nickname for Harakin, if you didn't figure that out. There's actually a 1 in 256 chance to see Terran Ahmed clone. So I will now spend a few seconds clicking every single Harakin to see if the Easter egg name has actually happened. It's synced between players, too, so, you know, that's something. Oh. Oh my god, surely. I feel like 256 Achmeds have already been trained. I, I think I might be missing some get combat, but this is really important. All right, we have nothing. Let's go and check it out what's happening. <laughs> Storming the gates with Achmed. Well, uh, you know, that was quite topical, I suppose. So this base will be taken care of. Canceled immediately. The Savants uh, drain attack rate of their enemies when they attack in the mode that they're attacking in. In this mode, though, uh, they're actually penetrating. So that's pretty useful versus the uh, Madcaps and indeed the Cyclopses for Top Ramen since they're light armored. Now, Ahmed charging forward. He's actually burning down all of the armor for the Phalanx. You can see the armor dropping to zero before the health followed suit swiftly. The Phalanx line back here hitting a lot of uh, willing forces, willing corpses to immediately hit the deck. Got a couple Sundogs mixed in over here, but that was a nice little pickoff here for EUD. And he's got another bio squad heading to the bottom right, it looks like, or maybe just the six o'clock position. There's some Sentinels and some Phalanxes over here, but they're not very well protected. I think you could basically just kill this with with uh, Harakans alone. Now the Strigas are kind of like Achmeds, but with sabers. Um, they they project a, a sort of attack forward, and it also applies a polyoid adhesive. It's pretty legit. Projection saber, and so that also uh, rends armor and uh, deals some damage over time and stuff. Look at this, transferring the workers, revealing his true nature. The expansion in the bottom right will certainly be attacked, but uh, EUD needs to back off and not immediately throw everything there. So this is another expansion that will undoubtedly be uh, attacked. 
The Strigas can actually attack air as well, but it doesn't look like they were necessary thanks to the Savants and EUD's own Sundog. Spreading out and getting a lot of bases covering the whole place. I like this position for EUD. He's, he's trying to win with Bio yet again, and he's definitely established a very nice foothold here. Now, a lot of the exciting units like the Strigas, we don't see too often, and there's probably a good reason for that right now. Uh, and so I don't know that they're actually a big part of it. But hey, they're tanky. They're kind of like an upgraded Achmed, right? They're kind of uh, upgraded Harakan, you think about it. Harakans have uh, two armor, 90 health. Striga has 120 health and three armor uh, as, an, as an indication. And the uh, Strigas are, even though they're capable of attacking air, most of the time they won't actually connect, but they do project forward the attack. So that's kind of neat, right? Like they attack and they, they send that attack forward, sort of like a line damage. Maybe we'll see it in action soon but that will debuff the armor of many units at once. It's very similar to the Harakan, admittedly, but uh, it's a little bit more reliable. Now, this is a ball of units that Ahmed would very much like to descend upon, but unfortunately, there's not too many of him, and actually getting onto the back line here is proving to be more difficult than it should be, but the uh, mech over here are falling on the left-hand side. A big force was also held at bay thanks to the consolidated position Top Ramen had on the right. So cracking the tough nut of Top Ramen is proving a little bit more difficult than he would like. EUD is going to be able to tickle this situation over here. Oh, can we get some splash damage? Well, unfortunately not enough, but uh, the Phalanxes are slowly being heckled to death, and it looks like Top Ramen is uh, trying to attack with his own pair of Sundogs over here. That's not going to be too significant, though, is it? EUD has a lot of money in the bank, but not a lot of Vespine, so he can't start Tier 3 just yet. Needs to deal with this position, but I look like he's just going to rally the... Uh, Sundogs over here, yeah, indeed. He's got a much higher Sundog count overall, and so that's going to be all she wrote for that position. Could probably throw another Watchdog down for safety or whatever. But this is going to allow Top Ramen to stretch his legs a little bit. He is resetting his base in the bottom right. Only has the uh, defenses there for now, but the Ministry can float on over pretty soon. This uh, will be scouted by the Trojan. It has Madcaps and a Cleric. I guess you can lift the Sentinels to try to counteract this, but instead he's just going to go ahead and send the Sundogs after it, which, you know, makes pretty good sense. He transferred most of the workers down to the 10 o'clock position instead. So there goes that. Not, not really going to be able to make anything happen there. Looks like Top Ramen momentarily taking a look at the top right just to see what's going on. And I think both of our players might be saving up for Tier 3, especially EUD. Almost has the resources for it. Needs to get more uh, workers on gas. He's uh, abandoned his gas mining over here in the 10 o'clock position. Interestingly enough, massing up his forces in the center. I'm looking around for the... No, I guess he spent down a lot of his money. I guess you can also say the same about Top Ramen, who's going for Valks. Uh, Valkyries are okay. Um, I guess he's worried about the Sundogs, right? Uh, yeah, I guess they're, they're pretty good in that situation. Now, this is, I like this drop attempt. The Sundog sort of partnering up with it here. There is one Sundog of his opponents. Oh, no! Okay, well, he unloads a couple of units, but, uh, you know, not as good as it could have been. If that Sundog had been uh, antagonizing it, maybe that would have been a little bit different. There are seven Sundogs going to dive into the 9 o'clock, just as the forces move out to meet all of the bio in the middle, where they are immediately eviscerated, all the air units falling almost instantaneously. Now, the Harakans need to actually get on top of that, and they can't, so they fall on back. The Sundog's also not going to try to test the waters here, and some of the units getting a little bit discombobulated. A couple more popping on through here. Yeah, actually, I forgot how much uh, the Strigas had range. That's uh, quite surprising. Well, the bottom right is going to get secured by Top Ramen in the meanwhile. And this is going to allow him to also take 9 o'clock and keep it. Still no gas being mined here from uh, 10 o'clock. And that is something that EUD is going to be cognizant of. He's starting to mix in his own Salamanders, which I don't mind. Trying to get some splash damage to deal with all of the madcaps. The one Phalanx uh, not actually able to do too much here. Looks like another one going to get cleaned. Man, EUD has so many minerals, but uh, does need to find a way to spend them. A lot of madcaps could help. Maybe just mass, uh, you know, uh, grab a bunch of mantles for the mass Ramses. Give you a, a nice little uh, lift on that front. We'll see. He's very clearly, in my opinion anyway, uh, doing his best to... Oh man, there's some bad rallies here for Top Ramen. He's spending all his money though, keeping it low. Capping more gas. Trying to take over these nodes over here in the 9 o'clock position. But yeah, it, it does feel like now EUD is once again going to attempt at take tier 3. Uh, he could resaturate his main there. I think he's left that by the wayside a little bit, setting up some sentinels down here with all of his excess minerals. Oh, he's so close to the tier three gas threshold. Not quite there, but but very close to being there. Phalanx is getting caught in the middle of the map. 
that's not gonna do too well here for Top Ramen. I wonder what Top Ramen's game plan is exactly. It feels a little discordant right now. He's getting some lodestones here for a good detection. That's gonna help deal with the Sundog raids, right? That's actually very good because there's, you know, there's a good number of them. And even though there's no real crowd control over here, the detection and the NCL over here as well should help a little bit. But this attack can and will be lethal to this position. And EUD does have tier three money. He's gonna go ahead and deploy it. And he will be the first one to that position. Bottom right, looks like it will indeed be dealt with. The Lodestone eventually going to get brought on down. There was only two Madcaps in there. Could have been a very different story. The counterattack coming in for Top Ramen. He has a big opportunity for an Irradiate here, but it looks like he cast it earlier. Didn't have the energy for it out of the Seraph. Not so good there. Phalanx is continuing to shell things out over here, causing some pain for EUD. Mortars dealing quite a bit of damage. Air units stacking up over here, but there's no crowd control for the skies, so Top Ramen's right-hand flank is going to be dealt with. That could have been an Irradiate as well, but it's not going to be. Oh, the Madcap's standing tall, though. They're fully stacked. Some Strigas onto them to burn them into a crisp, but the Sentinels are going to deal with the rest of the ground forces, and those Madcaps were instrumental in dealing with that position. The air push otherwise definitely would have been hectic. Tier 3, we're probably about 40% of the way there, so EUD needs to hold on and maybe try to reestablish an extra base. Heracles to block the position at three o'clock. You don't mind that very much at all. No defenses really over here for nine though. The next round of bio units for EUD can absolutely descend upon that. He's done well to spend most of his mineral bank, but it's starting to bank up again, again, again and again. Definitely need to see a little bit more expenditure there. He is gonna go ahead and think about taking another base at 10. Retaking 10 o'clock would be a dream for our bio champion. But what does he want to do once he has tier three? That's the question. Treasury on site. Captaincy's gone idle right now for Top Ramen. He's just going to push out with mass tank right now, switching gears pretty significantly. The Heracles does some splash damage, but obviously not going to be enough. We have a couple here for EUD as well. I heard something that lifted off. It's a treasury headed to that three o'clock position. And so far, EUD has been pretty good at dogging the army position of Top Ramen, but I think he's about to make a mistake and fly the other direction. Tier three just finished for EUD. What does he want to do with it? That's the question. I'm taking a look at that production tab while we keep track of the army positions and the Sentinels on the high ground over here. I think they're gonna be pretty significant, but remember that the Phalanxes can and will outrange them despite the cliff advantage. Uh, unfortunately, those watchdogs are definitely targeting down the the Seraphs here, that's a little bit awkward. Charging a little bit too close to the sun. The bio gonna push out, see what it can catch on the meanwhile. But I think top left is gonna be dealt with. Phalanx is trying their best. That's not a position you really wanna be in. Man, what is the UD gonna build? He's got so much money. Has he ever even had tier three before is the question. Gorgon's descending. I don't think there's much here to hold for the three o'clock, so they'll trade bases. And I mean, this is gonna maybe slow down an attack move back at best. Queuing up more units here for EUD, trying to keep his money low. Top Ramen kind of in the same boat, only has five madcaps in, in display right now. Never ended up retaking bottom right. Rotating more units around. We got Wellbores coming and a Diadem. That's pretty much it for tier three expenditure from EUD. Gorgon's just massacring this position. There's so many of them. What can Top Ramen do from this spot? He's gonna take tier three of his own. That's what he was saving up all his money for. He didn't wanna spend down to the last dollar. He's taken out 12 o'clock. He's taken out top left with more masons streaming on in just to return the resources or return to mining. But these Gorgons are proving to be such a menace. Madcap's gonna finally clear them out. And remember that three o'clock was taken despite all of this. So, I mean, obviously the double gas here from the Wellbores is going to pay for itself pretty soon. And the diadem over here, nearly complete. That's the ion cannon. Crowning jewel of the Terran arsenal. And look at this, clearing out the uh, ability, stopping any irradiates from coming on through. Love that, no detection either. And now the Gorgons are catching the phalanxes as well. This could be a huge pick for EUD because he just relieves all of the pressure and starts to use his tech advantage. Remember that tier three takes so long to make. It's only halfway done right now for top ramen. And then after that, he still has to actuate it. Both of our players on, uh, well, I can't say four bases because this one did get quashed by all of these phalanxes. So three o'clock uh, is up and running for sure. And it is double gas, yes. But the same is true for the nine o'clock position that Top Ramen holds. So right now an economic advantage, definitely in terms of worker count, no, no questions asked, but also in terms of active bases. 
Diet, I'm going to go ahead and take to the skies, float on over to that three o'clock position. May we see it in action soon. This fleet of uh, Gorgons, this is, I guess, a wing of Gorgons. It's not that not big enough to be called a fleet yet. And a whole bunch of bio going to be soon supplemented by the Iron Foundry units. Four Sun Dogs leading the charge. Not going to be long for this world. Almost immediately torn up. Harakin's trying to descend. The Phalanx is going to be the main sort of force of action here, and yeah, I'm not really sure what EUD can do in this position. He never ended up switching over to the uh, the Eidolons instead to try to snipe out these extremities, and he also hasn't really completed any surrounds either. The Wyvern's coming out, not a bad choice, actually. When the Phalanx is deployed, it, it has zero armor. I was almost to say it only has zero armor. But there's three armor pens, so the Goliaths will not be uh, defending against that penetration, and neither will, of course, the Madcaps or the Clerics. Second diadem being set up over here. Hasn't dealt any damage, the first one, but uh, certainly a, a potentiality if he can get some scouting down. It has a pretty absurd weapon range. But at the same time, he's abandoned ship over here. No diadem to defend the ground push up in this location. Okay, one of them going to get dragged on in. There are some other units over here. That's going to cause Top Ramen to consider his options. This big AoE field is going to slowly do some damage, soften up some of his units. And yeah, Top Ramen is thinking about charging on forward, but he's about to get shellacked. A couple of Madcaps going to hit the deck immediately. Most of them moving out of dodge, but look, these Madcaps being interrupted by this force is going to stop them from being able to do too much. At the same time, the Seraph charges on in, revealing and reducing the armor of these Diadems, allowing the Sundogs to pick one of them off. Is this the dying moment for EUD, or is his Wyverns going to be enough? Another diadem shot, clearing all of the ground units. Madcaps and Heracles charging on in. At this point, the armor is so, so low. I think the diadem will be able to get a good shot off here. Oh, nice irradiate, killing off so many masons, though. The Madcap's going to go ahead and finish the job as well. Remember, the Wyverns can't attack air, and it looks like they just took a little bit of splash from the diadem shot. No watchdogs, nothing to defend versus the sun dogs that are just massacring my boy. No, 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 not your own units. Okay, thank God. Just a couple of mavericks. Or madcaps, perhaps. All right. EUD trying his best to stabilize here, but he's only on three bases, and bottom right has been taken. The wyvern's flying in just to see a diadem of top ramen's own. Is that going to be enough for, t for EUD to concede the game? He's got a penumbra coming. He's got a claymore coming. That's interesting. Claymore would be bit really good versus Bio. I mean, it has three armor pen, so it's also pretty good versus anything other than the uh, Heracles or the the Phalanx. The one Wyvern. I was wondering where it was. Back here in the bottom right. It'll eventually get cleared out. Just toss an Irradiate on it. Ramen, Irradiate works on, on Mech. You can do it. He, he doesn't know. He'll figure it out eventually. The Penumbra is out. If you can get a couple of those, you can take some very dominant engagements versus the Mech army. But now we've got a ministry over here. We've got a diadem over here. Slowly cleaning house. Clearing out all the junk left behind by his opponent. Begun. The Ion Wars have... Oh my god. This could be a big hit. Reduces the Seraph pretty massively. Claymore here to deal with the rest. It slows units that it hits. Much worse than the Gorgon, actually. But they stack as well. Ahmed, you didn't have to give your life for that. But that's okay. I can't wait for an Ahmed campaign to come out so you guys can find out who Ahmed is. He's a really cool character. He's, he's pretty much the greatest character I've ever invented. So, uh, one day you guys will learn about the lore. One day. All right, well, this game is actually still going on somehow. Penumbras, Claymores, etc. I can see where the Claymores can definitely have a little bit of efficacy with their uh, ability to hit a bunch of units and, and slow them. Because it has a piercing shot, so if it penetrates units, it slows all of them. Uh, is there a Penumbra about to pop out? There's actually a Penumbra Idol over here that can help defend the natural. Oh, that Diadem shot was really meaty, though. Looks like EUD spending all of his micro attention to do his best at dealing with this position. And that's going to be GG because he does have that counterattack. He didn't realize he had that Penumbra lying in wait to deal with his natural, and he just couldn't breach it. Not with all the Diadems. Man, almost a 30-minute banger TVT. Subscribe if you like mirror matchups with 50 goddamn units per race. And I'll see you tomorrow for even more Cosmonarchy.